When it comes to dogs, everyone loves a thick, healthy coat. However, I want to spend my days cleaning up heels of hair, setting her whenever. In this edition of Animal Facts, we're singling out canines that are extra and that they are the dogs that shed the most. Maybe you've heard size matters. It's a given that St. Bernard's would be bountiful shedders because of their thick protective double coats. But their sheer size catapults them into the upper echelon of shedding prowess. At 26 to 30 inches at the shoulder and weighing between 140 and 180 pounds, the even-tempered saint is a gentle giant. However, you should only make one part of your family if you don't mind the grind of continually cleaning up drool, mud, and of course hair. Although they shed small to moderate amounts of hair daily, twice a year they blow their coats, usually in the spring and fall. To minimize the amount of spring and holiday cleaning you'll have to do, make sure your big buddy eats quality food and gets brushed regularly. Use a rubber curry brush if your saint is short-haired, or pin brush and two-in-one comb if you have a long-haired saint. The Papillon's claim to fame is being a lively lapdog with butterfly ears. This happens to be where it gets its name. A lap dog may be precisely the type of pup you're looking for, but be sure you're chill with your friend leaving behind a lap full of loose hairs. Pappies are known as moderate shedders as they have a single coat and shed lightly but continuously throughout the year. Like double-coated breeds, they go through two periods a year of moderate to excessive shedding to the extent of which depends on factors like a seasonal shift in the climate, if you take your pup out for their daily walk in spring or autumn, or the temperature is higher or lower than normal, and home cooling or heating systems which mask the outdoor temperature. Dogs that live in regions where temperature changes occur gradually may experience only minimum shedding year-round. If your Papillon is a heavy shedder, be sure to brush them at least once a day during this time, as many of these loose hairs will become trapped in their coat and may lead to yeast infections if you do not brush them out. With proper care, your little sidekick will float like a butterfly. While most breeds are either single or double coated, the Kison is in a league of its own. They have a dense double top coat, coarse undercoat, and an outer coat of longer guard hairs that form a quadruple layered barrier that keeps them toasty in cool weather, dry in wet weather, and cool when the heat is on. As with all spitz breeds, caissons shed relentlessly, especially during the seasonal shedding periods. The upside is that their coats are virtually odorless, so while you may have to deal with a lot of fluff, your home will be funk free. To keep their coats free of tangles and mats, Brush your caisson at least once a week, daily during shedding periods, from head to tail. Part the hair in sections and mist with water to decrease static electricity and improve manageability. And be sure to brush from the roots to the ends to prevent matting. Fun fact, the caisson is known as the Smiling Dutchman because they tend to form a tooth-bearing grin that looks like it's anything but innocent. Chances are it is, but you never know. Deciding to include the Siberian Husky in our list was a no-brainer. Any dog described as Siberian should come with a disclaimer denying responsibility for property damage or allergic reactions caused by their luxurious fur. It's not their fault, plain Mother Nature. It is said that if you have a Husky, you'll never eat another meal that doesn't include dog hair. It literally gets everywhere. Make sure you have a good vacuum because huskies shed a ton on a typical day, let alone during their blowing season. One way to minimize shedding is to move to a cooler climate. Huskies that live in cold areas tend to shed less than those living in warmer regions. Ironically, taking care of their coat doesn't take much effort. Like the caisson, the husky is practically odorless. When it comes to bathing, they clean themselves like cats and seldom need baths. Grooming a husky coat is also surprisingly easy. Just brush them out once a week, every day during shedding season, and you'll have one handsome husky on your hands. If you're not afraid of big hair or hard work, basically if you were a young adult in the 80s, get yourself an old English sheepdog. They're large, lovely, and have locks that need lots of attention. 
whether on their bodies or in tufts strewn about the floor, the couch, your clothes, well, everywhere. However, there are a couple of advantages to having a sheepdog instead of other heavy shatters. First of all, their coats are so long and shaggy that most of their loose hair gets trapped in their fur. It must be brushed out. And unlike most double-coated breeds, sheepdogs don't shed seasonally. So you will have the headache that come with a deluge of fur in the spring and fall. An essential beauty routine for your BFS should include brushing the top coat and raking the undercoat at least every other day and bathing your buddy every six to eight weeks. Cruella DeVille went to great lengths to get her hands on the elegant black and white spotted coats of the Dalmatian puppies in a particular Disney film. However, if she'd done her homework, she could have saved a lot of time and energy. You see, Dalmatians shed, always. So she could have created her coats by merely collecting the loose hairs they left behind. Dows have short, coarse hairs that show no mercy. Not only will they end up all over your house, but they'll also needle into your clothing, carpet, and upholstery, making them difficult to remove without a little extra time and elbow grease. The bright side is they only have a single coat, so they don't shed seasonally. And since their hairs are short and stiff, their molting isn't as noticeable as other heavy shatters. You may be wondering why a dog with such short hair sheds so much. Well, the short answer is that the hair gets trapped in long double coats of most heavy shedding dogs. But since dowels have a single layer of hair, there's nothing underneath to catch the excess. So it falls off of them and onto everything. Good thing they're pretty. Fun fact. Dalmatian's coats are one of a kind, just like fingerprints. Golden Retrievers have flowing golden tresses that would make Rapunzel jealous. But that beauty comes with a price. Piles and piles of dog hair. To say that Goldies shed a lot would be an understatement. Goldies shed profusely. Like other double-coated breeds, the hair in their dense outer coat is water-resistant and their thick undercoat is very plush yet acts as insulation, yet acts as insulation to keep them warm or cool. This distinct combination of fine and furry hair is the recipe for creating an endless supply of feathery plumes that float on air and cling to everything else during the shedding season. If you have a Goldie, consider yourself lucky. You'll never have a gentler, more fun-loving pal. So what if you have to give them a good brushing every day, invest in a quality pet vacuum, and keep a lint brush in your back pocket to whisk away many messes quickly? They're worth it. Ever wonder why Samoyeds wear a perpetual smile? The world will probably never know for sure, but we think it's because they know they won't have to clean up the fur they shed. Samoyeds are yet another working breed from Siberia, so they are among the heaviest shedding breeds of the heavy shedders. Also, since they have fluffy, snowy white coats, they shed more noticeably, particularly during the most wonderful times of the year, spring and autumn. Although there's no way to stop your Sammy shedding, there are ways to keep a snowdrift from turning into an avalanche. Yes, I've said it a few times now, but it bears repeating. Along with a proper diet, brushing your pup a few times a week with a slicker brush or metal comb daily during shedding seasons is the most effective way to manage molting. Or if you want to get to the root of the issue, use an undercoat raid or de-shedding tool to penetrate surface fur and lift loose undercoat to the surface. A gentle bath with a high-end shampoo before brushing can help separate molted fur from the rest. If you love your semi, you'll do whatever it takes to make your lives more comfortable. But if the joy of being a human Zamboni starts to get to you, imagine you're taking a walk through the clouds. The Great Pyrenees breed originated in the Pyrenees Mountains, a snowy range that sits between Spain and France. So their double coats that protect them from the elements is a given. They're large, so it's natural for them to lose more fur and for us to notice it more. What differentiates pyres from other heavy shedders is that they're deceptively easy to groom. But their dirt and tangle resistant fur doesn't need to be brushed for as long or often as you might think. You may want to brush your pure daily to keep hair from accumulating, however, they only need to be brushed once or twice a week outside of when they blow their coat. Fun fact, the Great Pyrenees breed is so old that their fossils dating between 1800 BC and 1000 BC have been found. 
Our top dog is the Alaskan Malamute, who coincidentally is a native of, you guessed it, Siberia, some 12,000 years ago. Yet, they've been carpeting homes for no short time. Although today they mostly enjoy lives of leisure, Malamutes were bred by an Inuit tribe called the Malamute to pull loads over great distances and sub-zero temperatures. Their thick, waterproof coats were ideal for sled work, and they would even use their corkscrew tails to protect their faces from brutal winds as they slept. Now the fur that was once the Malay's saving grace shows no mercy as it falls to the floor, floats in the air, and fills garbage bags to the rims. If you're thinking of getting a Malamute, don't be afraid. One advantage to having a Mali is that they are similar to Huskies in that they clean themselves like felines, so you won't have to deal with dirty paws or muddy fur between baths. Malamutes also get cool points for having odorless fur that can be spun into yarn. So instead of putting those garbage bags on the curb, you might want to hold on to a few in case you want to knit a Christmas sweater or two. It's almost that time of year. And dog fur sweaters are actually a thing. Well, this video has got my sinuses in a bit of a tizzy, so here's a few more for you to enjoy. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button for future videos. And as always, catch you next time.